Hi there, homespun friends. It's Sherry, and it's great to see you on this very hot late June day. Let me tell you, I have been outside today. I have been watering plants. It is going to be close to 100 degrees today, and we've had no rain for several weeks. It's crazy. Um, it looks like we might have a chance maybe for some thunderstorms over the next few days, and I'm really hoping that that will come through because the farmers are struggling. And as I go outside in the mornings, I am watering the few flowers that I planted this year and those that come back from year to year. I did not plant as much this time. I don't have any vegetables growing. First time in a long time that I have no vegetables. I do have fruits. Of course, we have our grape arbor. We have a huge plum tree, very tall plum tree. We've already canned two batches of plum jelly. And um, we have blueberries and blackberries. And we still have deer that are coming into our yard. I captured a picture of a deer a couple days ago, right in the middle of the afternoon. He was standing in our yard with the cars going down the street. It's wild. And he was not scared at all in any way. We tried to chase him off, but he just stared at us. And he jumped up on his back legs and tried to knock our plum tree and get the plums to fall down to the ground so he could eat them. And that's the wildest thing to see. But we have proof that the deer are all over our yard. We saw, I guess it was a couple nights ago, uh, around that same time, we saw several deer in our yard at nighttime, and um, they're just everywhere now coming out of the woodwork, and lots of my neighbors have also been seeing them in their yards, and they'll eat flowers too. So um, I think they've eaten some of our grapes, um, eaten some of our berries, and we just have to kind of uh, do the best that we can, you know, when we're fighting the wildlife. And I am going to next year be smarter and as our grapes begin to grow i'm going to try to put some fruit netting over the top of the arbor it's a 16 foot arbor it's really tall and i hate putting netting all over it but i think that's what i'm going to have to do because um you know that um, the deer are just going to take all of our fruit if we don't try something um, in addition to that problem we have another pest problem and i'm going to come back in the next video and I'm going to talk to you about that one because you don't want to miss it. But today I'm coming to you for a specific purpose and that is to tell you about my book. I have a new book out and it's my first. It's very exciting. Um, I know some of you follow me over on Facebook and so you are aware that the book is out. But for those who don't have Facebook but they follow me on YouTube, um, you might be surprised to learn that I have a book. Last August, I was trying to think of something that I might could share on my Facebook page. You know, I love writing devotions and poetry and quotes and things like that. But uh, something prompted me to share just a segment of a chapter of a book that I was writing. And it wasn't a book necessarily that I was writing. I just call it a story. I write stories all the time. Um, and so it was just something I was working on, a little storyline. And, um, and so I thought, I'll, I'll share a little portion of that on my page with a pretty picture. And when I did, so many people said, what is this from? What is this book? I want to get it. And they wanted to know more about the story. And I said, well, it's not a book. It's not even much of anything. It's just something I'm working on right now. And the interest was so great, I decided to keep going and telling the story of Miriam's life. She is the um, kind of the heroine or primary focus of the book. And, uh, and so it's very easy to love Miriam. She is a, a wonderful person. And, uh, and so her story uh, is, is captivating to a lot of people and to me, even though that I'm writing this story. And so as the story went on, I began to release what I called installments about once a week, I would release one, and then it was different days, and people began to ask more and more, where can we read this? How can we follow this story? There was not an easy way on Facebook for me to keep the story together, you know, because I post a lot of things throughout the week. So I might have an installment here, and then it might be eight days later before I post another installment in that little series. And so what I did is I went over and created a writing series page where every time I released a, an installment on The Homespun Wife, the next day I would go over and put it on the writing series page. And that way, everything on the writing series page related to that particular storyline that I was writing and I called it We Have This Hope. And in the end, there were 27 chapters to this storyline or what now is called a book. 
and lots of people were asking for an easier way to read it. They wanted to buy it, have it in their house, read it at their leisure, looking it up online, even going over to the writing series page and having to scroll back and see if they missed any chapters. It was hard to do. I admit it was. And so I decided that I would think about that. Now the storyline, the book has been finished online for a um, cu couple of months now, and I was still uh, every week getting requests for, I, I would like to buy this book that I'm hearing about or reading. And I'm like, there is no book. And so it was tough saying that every time. So I decided that we would just put this into a book format and here it is. We have this hope, you can see it's quite a, a tall book. And um, on the back, it has the, the little uh, blurb here about the book. In the rural foothills of North Carolina, Miriam finds herself in a mill village with little hope for the future. Utterly alone, she harbors a deep secret with no solution when she meets a young man named Sam. Despite the hardship of the Great Depression, Sam hatches a plan that just might save them both. Even when devastating events occur, Sam's enduring faith never wavers. But will Miriam survive the heartbreak ahead? And so this is Miriam's story. And it's um, the book itself has just been out since the, let's see, I don't know if it's even been, it's not even been a week yet. Um, and uh, I've sold quite a few copies of this book. And I wanted to tell you guys that we know that there are a couple of little small typos in the book. And a reader, one of my early readers pointed out, just saying that she loved the book, but she just wanted to point out to me that in chapter 18, that there are duplicate pages in chapter 18. So chapter 18 finishes, and then immediately under that, part of that chapter is repeated. And so when you, if you have one of these earlier books, you're going to notice in chapter 18, when you sort of feel like you finish the chapter and the story continues with something that's already been told, those are the duplicate pages. And so that has now been corrected and future copies should not have that error in it. But I know that quite a few copies were sold, you know, the early ones with that error in chapter 18. And so we're sorry about that. Um, I, I've been surprised at the part, partly how easy it is to publish a book and then some of the difficulties and also in publishing a book like this. Um, I write, you know, I was writing on Facebook. I had everything gathered together. So all I had to do was copy and paste. I actually, in order to keep this for myself and I use an Apple MacBook computer, I would copy and paste all the stories into Pages, which is an app that I have on my MacBook. It kind of keeps everything together. And then when I got ready to um, have this printed, I needed to put it in a Word document so that the Word document could then be put into a PDF. <laughs> it's kind of complicated. And so as I begin shifting and transferring all of these chapters over, there's always that risk, you know, of there being a mistake, something getting picked up twice and put over. And I think that, that it's just a misprint that happened in the book. So when you get there, you'll notice it. The reader did say that she noticed it and just skipped right over it and went right on reading and it wasn't a problem for her. So I hope if you have one of those early editions, it's not a problem for you. And um, and like I said, there might be a couple other little small things that are, you know, mistakes in the book. But overall, um, I appreciate Book Designer who put this into a PDF format that met the standards for um, the book to be put together and printed. Instead of getting like a little small book with small print that I knew would be difficult, it'd be difficult for me to read those. I can hardly read those small paperbacks. We decided to make this a tall book and I'll show you the print inside of, um, of this. It is a wonderful kind of a larger print. Um, I don't know if it's classified as large print, but it should be. It's a larger print book making it super easy to read. And so I will leave the links in the description box below. You can get the paperback copy or you can get this on your Kindle and your ebook. I know nowadays a lot of people with limited space love keeping all of their books on, um, you know, like on their iPad. You can read it on your phone. <laughs> you know, you can, um, you know, you can keep these in different formats. So you can either order it as a paperback or a Kindle or both. 
and um, and so it will be coming to you directly from Amazon when you order it. And you'll have to let me know what you think about it. And if you read this storyline and you like it, if you could go over on Amazon and leave me a book review, that would be awesome because all of that really does help me and my future writing. I've had people asking now if I would do a book of my devotions and poetry. I've considered doing that as well. And um, I'm learning as I go and trying to figure all of this out. So we will see. I really love having pictures in my book, but that becomes a lot more expensive and less practical when you're putting out books like this. So, um, so I always have to see how these devotions and poetries transfer over into a book format. I've also had people writing me on Facebook asking me if there will be more to Miriam's story and there will be. I've already started writing it. I'm writing it now. I'm going very slowly with it because I am also working on Pastor Life, which is the new online ministry that my husband and I are doing. Um, and that has taken a lot of time over the last few months. Plus, I'm continuing to write daily over on my Facebook page, The Homespun Wife there. So, I've been working pretty hard and I don't want to get uh, burned out on all of the different writing and works that I'm doing. So when writing Miriam's story, I'm taking my time. I had already picked out a cover page for it, a co the cover of the book. I've picked the title and that was several months ago that I did that as I started working on it. And um, since then, I've changed my mind about the title of the book that's coming in a sequel. So I'll be letting you know that. I'm going to work on that some. I think the book cover and title that I have picked out, that I'd picked out earlier for the second book, is one that I might use in the next sequel, if there is one. So um, I just, in my mind, as I'm moving along and um, letting, you know, God kind of lead me in my writings, um, I'm just taking my time. So there will be, Lord willing, there will be a sequel to this. It's already in the works. And so I just wanted to give you this update about the book, friends, and speak to you just a little bit. I'm going to be coming back now with another segment in which I talk to you about something that's going on in our house. And I hope that you will come back for that future video. I need to know your comments on, on that and if you've ever had a situation like this happen. Friends, it is wonderful to see you today. You know that I love and appreciate you all through the years. So many of you have prayed for me, supported me, and been here for me. No matter what I've attempted to do, you have been an encouragement. And God has used you to bless my life, and so I love you. Thank you for spending time with me today, and I will be sure to see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.